Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my brand new Golfit tutorial. In this tutorial I want to cover everything I know about the Golfit editor. This tutorial is aimed at both new players and veterans alike. Hopefully I can teach you something you might not have known. There will be timestamps in the description for each topic if you'd like to fast forward past the beginner stuff. And as usual, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment and I will do my best to answer. Alright guys, use your mouse to aim. Use WASD to move, and control to go down, and space to go up. Congratulations, you learned how to move. There are quite a few controls you might not be aware of. For example, if you press G, it will toggle gameplay objects, allowing you to see what a map would look like while playing. The next is the flashlight. If you press L, it'll basically create a light in front of your camera, so you can see in darker spots. Also, to see even darker spots, you press K to turn your night vision on, which increases your brightness drastically. If you press J while hovering over an object, you can lock it, disabling interactivity with said object until you want to unlock it, in which case you just press J again. And the next thing is the coordinates button. Press O, it'll basically show the coordinates of wherever you're pointing. This is more useful to those who are trying to get precise coordinates and try to put things exactly where they need to be. The spawn menu is where you will grab all your objects. Pull up the menu, hit tab. Within the menu, there are many different categories which can be found on the left side. But for the most part, they can be broken down into lanes, objects, special effects, lights, and gameplay. There are a few additional categories down here, but we'll get to them later. On the right side of the spawn menu are the themes. The themes as of right now are Grassland, Winterland, Mines, Graveyard, Pirate's Cove, and Jade Temple. Hopefully more will come. If you can't find a certain object, make sure you're on the correct theme. As a side note, all the lane pieces will appear as the grassland version within the menu. If your game is not broken, that's just how it is. While in the spawn menu, you can left click an object to spawn it. If you left click again, you can place it. If you use your middle mouse button, you will create a copy of the last spawned object. If you right click while holding an object, you will cancel it. While holding an object, you can press Q or E to rotate the object. If you hold ALT, you can place it under your objects or on the side of them. If you press caps lock, you will hold the object in front of your face like so. Once an object has been placed, you can manipulate it further by left clicking on it. Once it's highlighted, you can press Q to change its location by clicking and dragging these arrows. You can change its rotation by pressing E and dragging the rings. And if you press R, you can change its scale by moving the boxes. If you are in the scale and you see the circle, you can move the entire thing at once. It can be a little finicky, so just keep trying. Alternatively, if you select an object and then press F, you can use your cursor to come down here to the bottom left and actually type in individual values to get it more precise. And you right click again to deselect. If you click an object and hold Alt while moving it, it will actually create a duplicate. And you can select multiple objects by holding Shift and clicking. Duplication also works while holding multiple objects, so you can create even more that way. And if you want to delete any of them, just select it or hover over it and press delete. Alright, lanes were the next thing I wanted to talk about. They're basically the bread and butter of golf it. Every golf course you play has probably utilized them in some way or another. Spawn them in, just press tab and go to the lanes tab. These are all your basic lanes. Additionally, there are a few other ones in user content, as well as the dynamic lanes, but I'll get into those in a second. Spawn in a lane, you simply click on a lane and place it in. 
Now, while you're holding on a lane, you might notice that all these white boxes have appeared. These boxes are snapping points. If you hover over a snapping point with a lane in your hand, it will snap to the same size. You will also perfectly connect them together. This works for most parts. It also works for goals. The next thing I wanted to talk about were dynamic lanes. Uh, these things right here, including the dynamic wall. These are a little bit more complicated, but the basics of them there, they have these little pyramid diamond thingies on them that you can manipulate to move them however you want. Basically, you can use this to move the entire thing. You can change it. If you click on this one right here, you can actually move the one end and not the other, or change the direction that it's outputting, causing some really weird shapes. I recommend that you just play around with them if you want to understand them better. To delete them, I think you have to delete a specific part. Aha, there we go. Alright, next part I want to talk about were wall pieces and alternate objects. If you take a lane and you right click on it, it might come up with an alternate objects menu. Doing so will change the sides or the railings. Do this if you want to make the things kind of fit in a bit better and look a bit neater. Do the same thing to the curved walls. You have all these options such as short walls, no walls, uh, third walls, and half walls. Well, kind of half walls. You get the point. Another thing I wanted to teach you real quick was about pipes. Go to obstacles, you have all these pipe options. Pipes are a little unique as they snap to these red snapping points instead of the white ones allowing you to make uh, intricate pipe networks. If you click on it, you can change its direction as before, and it will rotate on that uh, red part. Alright, to create your first hole you need only three things. You need a way to spawn the ball, you need a way to keep the ball in play, and a place for the ball to go. And over here, I will show you how to do that. First things first, press tab, go down to gameplay, and select the hole spawn. This little ball is where your ball will spawn at. Press E or Q, you can rotate it, and left click place, and it will be placed down. Now if you right click it, you can change the hole. I don't want it to be hole 5, so I'm going to highlight that and replace it with 1. Then you can test it out. You hit it, you see what happens. Now, as you might have noticed, I can't actually hit the ball again. That's because it's not technically in any play area, and it has nowhere to reset itself. So to fix that, let's add some play area. You press tab, go down in gameplay, and click play area. You can place that on top of lanes, and it will step to it. Alternatively, you can also manipulate it just like any other object. Now this is very important. Don't forget to right click on the play area and make sure it's set to the right hole. This is hole 1, so we will be using play area 1. Now let's make this lane just a bit longer. Now if you place more play area, you middle click, it will actually retain the last number that you placed. For example, if I, let's say if I delete these, I place one more, I change this to 13, right? If I middle mouse click again and place it, it will actually stay as 13. Now obviously we don't want 13 because this is a 1. Now, place a goal, you just simply press tab, go to goals, and find one on the menu that you want to use. I'm going to go with the simple goal 3 walled. Place that down, and there you go. 
And don't forget to place play area even around the uh, goal, or else people will have trouble getting in. Technically speaking, this hole works. There's nothing wrong with it, despite this being at hole zero. The flag actually does nothing except be aesthetic. If you want to change the number on the flag, just simply right click it and type in the hole you want. Technically speaking, there's no upper limit to how many goals you can have, except unless, you know, the game breaks or something. So you can have as many as you want, but it's common courtesy just to put either a 9-hole course or an 18-hole course. If we test this, it should work now. Ta-da! There we go. Our first hole's complete. Alright, rotators are the first thing I wanted to show you that's advanced. Rotators are a way to create an object that spins. You can spin it on the X, Y, Z axis, or all at the same time if you want. Spawn one in, press tab, go down to gameplay, and click rotator. When you place it in, it's going to look like a plank that spins. By default, it'll be spinning on its X axis. If you like to change that, click it with the right click button, and you can change its rotational rates Basically, how fast it spins in the given direction. Alternatively, you can also change its offset to change where it spins. Now, if you click Mesh, you can change its object that it's based off of. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to use a plank of wood. Now, one thing you might notice is if you scale the plank of wood, or the object rather, it'll actually retain all its properties of the object that it currently is looking like. Another thing to note that you can also use custom meshes from imported objects. So for example, let's say I have this uh let's find something small, like this treasure chest, right? You could still use that as a rotator. Alright, the next thing I wanted to talk about was timed rotation. Timed rotation is a gameplay object found right here under gameplay objects that creates like a chopping motion. So, for example, this one is set to 90 degrees negative and zero, which means it starts at negative 90 on the Z rotation, then ends at zero then goes back and forth between the two. When you spawn one in, it should appear something like this. It'll we'll start on the zero axis on all the rotations, then end on the Z rotation 160. Now if we change these, we can see what happens. So like this one will do kind of like a sideways motion. This one will do a, oh, I get it, a slapping motion. And if we put them all together, it'll make like this weird, I don't even know how to explain that. It's one of the objects that you kind of have to play with to understand it better. Just remember, it starts at one rotation, ends at another, then jumps back to it. And the slower you do this, the slower it moves. And also the reverse. Another thing, 
just like before, you can change its mesh to change it into any, any object that you want. So, like, you can make it into a rock if you just so desire. For whatever reason. That's pretty much it for that. So, the next thing I want to teach you guys is the Master Transformer. In essence, it's a way to make an object go from point A to point B and transform in between. So, let's take this object and right click it. As you see, we have this menu. When you click start, it'll be this portion right here where it starts. If you click end, it'll be where it ends at. So if you change this, you can change basically what happens in between. So if you change the location to there and press enter, it'll instead end right there instead of over here. And if you want, you go the opposite way by using a positive number. And every time you exit the menu, it'll show you what it does. But also, you can rotate it as you, in, in, like in between. If you do 360, it's going to just stay straight. So what you need to do is like 180. You can also change its scale, so you can make it grow really big in between. But make sure you change its entire scale, so it like changes at the same time. You can also change where it starts out, and do this. They could do the opposite thing. You can also change how long it takes in between each step, like its start to end duration and end to start duration. So, like, let's change that to five. And it should be really slow. So, the higher no that number is, the longer it takes. Uh, you can activate it for any hole you want. Uh, you can change its start and start pause, basically so you can have multiple objects kind of start at different times. You can make it pause in between start and stop. So like it'll stop there for two seconds, then come back. And if you change its method to step, instead it will go back and forth without actually going in between. And these are all different options you can choose. I recommend just playing with them to figure it out for yourself. It's actually pretty simple once you get into it. Alright, so the next thing I want to talk about was boosts. Simply put, they just increase your ball speed. This is the 100 versus the 1000. If you place down a boost, you press tab, go to gameplay, and click boost, then place it. The arrow is the indicator at which direction it's going, so to change that you just press E, then just change it to whatever direction you want. If you right click it, you can change its power. So if we put something ridiculous like 5,000, it's probably going to go flying. We. Alright, so time for cannons. I'm sure you've played on a map with cannons. Basically, you hit your ball into it, it gives you this little aim indicator, and you press left click to fire. Now, the spawn one. You actually have to go to Spawn Menu, Pirate's Cove, then down to Gameplay. And if you place one down, you'll place it like that. And depending on the power level is how far it'll shoot, basically. Up to 10,000.
And with planets, I'll get to those in a minute. There's some weird interaction, but you, you can still kind of shoot at it, but sometimes not. It's actually really weird. I don't know what causes that. All right, the next thing I wanted to show you is targets. Uh, there are three targets. Normal, bouncy, and no bounce. They all have their own uses. Normal will act like any other object and just bounce off it like normal. Bouncy will cause it to fly off really fast. And no bounce will actually cause it to kind of just flomp right into it like it's a beanbag. All of them have their own uses. I'll leave you guys to figure out what they could be used for. Alright, planets. These things can be slightly more complicated than a lot of other things we've talked about. If you right click on a planet, it'll have a whole host of things you can change to it, including its cloud density, its cloud color, its atmosphere. Then you can even scroll down and see even more stuff. I highly recommend you just play with it yourself and figure out what you can do. But, for the most part, is they have uh, their own gravitational force. This one's set to negative 5,000 with a gravitational scale of 30, which will basically pull my ball in when I get close to it. And of course, you could change its light intensity, its light radius, and all that. You can change its planet type. So if you want like a lava planet, you can do that. You can have it into an alien planet, make it a moon. As before, just go through it yourself, figure out what you want to do with it. They're really useful though. So another fun thing you can mess around with is the gravity sphere. It's basically a planet without the solid bit in between. And it only has one force value. Basically the way they work is your ball goes into it, it basically gets sucked up. If you hit it hard enough. But if you hit it too hard, it'll go flying out. Wee. <laughs> I believe if you change this to a negative value, it'll actually force the ball away from it. Yeah, you kind of kind of see that? How it just kind of lumps the ball all around it. And next thing I want to show you guys is gravity fields. Basically, kind of like the gravity sphere, it acts as like a field that exerts force in a specific area. The arrow will show you which way it's forcing, so you can do things like wall running. Alright, so force fields are another fun, usable object in this editor. For the most part, they just exert a force in a given direction. The rectangular ones will force it upward, or towards the red arrow, while the circular, spherical ones will basically push outward. Or pull inward if you give it a negative. So for example, if we try this out, it should flump it up. Wee. And if it lands on it again, it'll keep doing it like a trampoline. Alright, so the next thing I wanted to show you guys is the ball trap plant. What this thing does is it eats balls within its radius and tosses them towards the arrow. You can change its define spat pattern to uh, shoot towards the arrow or where it's looking or towards reset only. Different types of things. You can change its speed at which it shoots. You can make it random in between its max and minimum. Uh, you can change how long it rotates before it fires. You can change the angle at which it fires. And you can change its rotation speeds, basically. 
it's one of those things where you gotta kind of play with to understand it better. But here's a little bit of an example. And that's pretty much it for that. So the reset area. Very useful tool if you want to keep players from going certain directions or out of trouble. Basically the way it works is, you touch the reset area, you get reset. Simple as that. However, some people don't know this, but if you right click on the reset area, you can actually change its delay. Requiring you to be in the field for a specific amount of time before it actually resets you. This could be useful for making soft reset areas that won't necessarily completely uh, take you out of using a specific area, but also won't let you idle in that area either, if that makes sense. Alright, teleporters. Another useful tool in your arsenal. Basically how they work is, in the words of Gladys, speedy thing come in, speedy thing go out. Now, portals can have multiple exits, and the game will automatically choose one at random for the bottle to exit through. Now, if you have multiple entrances but only want a specific exit, you actually have to set the exit portal as the primary exit by right-clicking it and selecting primary exit. You also have to make sure all the portals are on the same channel, like this portal and these three are all set to 1. And these two are set to 2. And these three are set to 3. Whee. So another fun thing I wanted to cover is rivers. And water. So, rivers are basically bodies of water that you can change their values. Basically, you can make like a roller coaster of water. And similar to uh, rivers, water works kind of like that, except without the force. Place down a river, just press tab, go down to landscapes, then click river. First one you place will be the main block. To alter it even further, you click on the diamonds just like a diamond lane and move those. If you hold alt, you can create new sections of the river. And at any point, you can actually go back through the river and change the points to make them a bit different. Then, if you go to the front of the river, right click, you can actually change its settings. You can change how forceful it is, how much correction it has, you can change its color, its opacity, all that. I recommend you play the settings for yourself to get a better feel for it. And the next thing is water. Basically, it's also in landscape. Go down to landscape, water, and place it. Then we place it, it might look invisible, but just click again and you should be able to select it and move it up. Then like every other object, you can change its shape and size. There is also a circular version if you want to use that instead. Alright guys, landscaping. It's an important but overlooked part of this uh, game. So you press tab and you go down landscapes, you can find a few, but also if you go to user content you can find a ton more. Now these are important. They really do make your maps look a lot better. And just like any other object, you can change their scale and all that. But more importantly, 
go down to your themes, you can actually change what they look like even more. Seriously guys, don't be lazy. Put some landscaping in your maps. You'll thank me later for it. Alright guys, time for events. Events are pretty important. You can use them for a lot of stuff. And it basically makes the game far more enjoyable. So you can do many things. You can make the ball uh, turn the light on or off. You can make it uh, change the time of day. You can make it add or move strokes. You can make it move boxes. You can make it change themes. You can make it uh, resize the ball. You can make it remove a piece of land and put it back after a short delay. You can make it so an object loses collision so you can uh, hit your ball straight through it. So here's some examples. Here's me turning off the light. Then using the other event to turn it back on. Here's me changing the time of day. Should turn back soon. There we go. Here's me adding strokes. Then removing them. Here's me moving a box. Here's me changing the entire theme of a section of track. Here's me increasing the size of my ball. Here's me removing a piece of terrain and moving it back. And here's me phasing through a box. You could seriously do a lot of things with the events. So the basis of them is press tab, you go down to gameplay, and press event. Right click the event, you can change what it does. Begin overlap is what happens when the ball touches the event, and the end overlap is what happens when the ball leaves the overlap. So you can make it either affect a selected object, a ball, or the world. So, we exit out of this for a second, and we spawn in a environmental piece, like a crate. Place it right here. We right click, select the object with this. It creates a new event. Now from here, you can choose what you want to do when it touches it. Simply put, you could do relocate, add it, and Click this to change it, then this changes the location of it. So if we want to put like 400 points into the air, we can do that. Then to test it, you just give it a good old test. But not only that, you can actually string it together to add different stuff. So press delay and click this again. Then you can add like a three second delay. Then relocate, click that again, and by default it'll be on the same point that it's currently at. So, first it'll hit the event, it'll move it up, about 400 uh, points up, it'll wait 3 seconds, then move it back down, according to this. Then after 3 seconds, then it plops it right back down. Uh, you can even do things like uh, changing the location of reset area. You can make it change things to invisible. See this thing, despite being invisible, is still there. So you can make invisible walls if you want to. And there's a ton of more things you can do. Like changing light intensity, changing time of day, adding strokes, setting strokes,
and so forth. Anyways, there's just a lot of things you could do with this, and I highly recommend you play with it yourself and figure it out. There's a lot of cool stuff you could do with this. One thing I forgot to tell you guys about earlier is blueprints. To create a blueprint, you simply shift, select, and select multiple objects and press enter. Then it'll pop up with this. You can name it like something like simple turn. It shows you how many components and you create the blueprint. Then when you press tab and go down to blueprints, it takes a second to load. Once it's loaded, you can click it, then place it. And I believe sometimes it works to actually attach it to snap points. And voila, done. So another important thing I wanted to show you guys is the lobby camera. The lobby camera is what basically people will see when they're waiting for the map to load. So basically I have this wall set here with this camera, which is the lobby camera, facing towards it. And this picture right here is what the people will see on the other side. To spawn one in, you just simply go to gameplay and click on the camera. Where did it go? Lobby view, right there. I believe you can only have one at a time though. I'm not sure what happens if you put multiple. And for reference, the size of the lobby is like right about here-ish. It's something you're gonna have to play with to figure it out. And we go save our map. We can actually test this by exiting. Going to the editor, then no, we host game, select map, and the golf it map. Don't worry, this is because we haven't uploaded the map yet. Map will only work correctly. Off. I'll see again. And ta -da, right there, like where we are pointing. And while we're on the subject, to actually uh, upload a map to the workshop, you go to editor. Workshop, then click on one of your maps, then upload it. So let's try Ninja Man's Islands. So once you upload it, you can upload like that. You change the version number, and it will basically upload it to Steam. Another thing I wanted to get into is importing things from the importer. So basically you go to editor, importer, then you click audio, then you have to find your specific file which will be down here. Press the refresh button it'll change like refresh it so you don't have to reset the game to actually import stuff. If you click that it will basically let you import it. Then, once you do that, you can actually go back into your map. Then you go to your sound gameplay object and set it to the MLG Airhorn. To actually, to actually use it, you have to connect it with a event. This one's set to activate. There's some weird audio glitches where it sometimes makes it play twice. I don't know what causes that. Alright guys, one last thing, I promise. To make text like you've been seeing all around, just go to Gameplay, Text, and Place It. It's that simple. If you right click it, you can change the text box. And if you click on color, you can actually change its color. Click on scale, you can change how big it is. And boom. Thanks for watching guys. Please like and subscribe if you want more content from me. Also, check me out at twitch.tv slash the great ninja man.
I really hope I was able to teach you something today about the editor.